we've got here is an outdoor unit for an air to water heat pump. So it looks identical to my eye to what you'd see for a normal air to air heat pump outdoor unit. But this thing's different. What this is doing is it's actually heating and cooling water and it's heating and cooling water uh, here in this unit itself. And then it's got water lines that will run that hot water or cold water into the house into some tanks that'll then get distributed. So just like a regular air to air outdoor unit, it's got the two fans, it's got a heat exchanger uh, behind it. So it's being able to pull the warmth uh, from the air and put it into that water, or it's dumping the heat from the inside of the house and dumping it outside, depending on the season. Now, this thing's really cool because this actually is uh, what's called a monoblock. It's not a split system like you'd see in a typical air to air system. So this becomes, it comes pre-charged at the factory. And the beauty of that is you get 40% less refrigerant leakage when you charge uh, the thing in the factory versus doing it in situ where you actually have to bring the refrigerant in a, in a bottle and pump it up and fill up all the lines to the house. The other great thing about it is that it uses 90% less refrigerant. And so unlike having to fill up all the lines in the house, this thing just uses a small amount of refrigerant that's already contained in here. So we have less potential for leakage because it's charged in the factory and less refrigerant to leak because there's less refrigerant, right? And the other great thing about this too is this is the newer model of these air to water heat pumps uh, made by Aeris Hydronics. And this thing uses R32A for the refrigerant. So most refrigerants that we've seen historically were the R410As. Uh, the industry is mandating that we move to the R32As. But the great thing about the R32A is compared to uh, you know, CO2, this thing is going to be 675 times worse than a CO2 molecule for global warming potential. But the R410A that we moved from that is about 1,975. So this is about a third of the damage that you would get if that refrigerant was to be leaked. So we've got a refrigerant that's a third as bad, we've got 90% less refrigerant, and we've got 40% less leakage because it's done uh, in a factory. So we're really driving down the potential for environmental harm by using this particular system. So we're gonna go inside next. We're gonna show you some of the other parts of the system here, but uh, really cool system. It's got electrical uh, power that you hook up to here, and then it's just got two water lines in the back that go to the inside of the house. Okay, so now we just came inside here, and so the outdoor unit is over here to my left, and it's gonna bring some hot water or cold water, depending on what the system's asking for, into uh, kind of the brains of the system right here. So we'll explain what these are in just a minute. Uh, and then we've got our two tanks right here. This is uh, our reservoir tank, which is gonna hold hot or cold water, depending whether you're heating or you're cooling. And then this is gonna be our domestic hot water. So this is uh, for showers and hot water that you're gonna need throughout the house. So this is the brains of the system. So this is gonna communicate with the outdoor unit and with the controls of the house. So either you're gonna have the homeowners that are gonna be asking and calling for more heating or more cooling, and you're gonna have the outdoor unit that needs to respond to that. So this kind of controls all of it and also has the ability to have demand response with say a, a local utility. So if you, for instance, had a, say it's summertime and there's a lot of sun shining and the power utility is bringing in a lot of extra energy, but it's not needed in the middle of the day, what this can do is it can say, hey, let's produce a whole bunch of uh, hot water and let's dump, dump it into this tank right here. And it's gonna be a thermal battery so that when you know everyone comes home from dinner or for dinner around five o'clock, they turn on the lights, they turn on the heat and all this stuff. You can use that solar power that happened at noon when no one was using it uh, later on in the day. So it becomes a thermal battery. So that's part of what this system's doing here, this system can also decide whether or not you need heating or cooling. So let's say that it's the shoulder season and yesterday it was kind of 50 degrees out, but today it's 75. Yesterday you needed heating, but today you needed cooling. Well, this thing will tell the outdoor unit whether to you know, create uh, warmth or take, you know, or, or create cool, right, cooling. And so it can, dump that heating or cooled, heat or cooled water into this tank, this thing can actually go from a tank of hot water to a tank of cold water within 15 minutes. So it'll just reverse right out. And so 
you know, this machine is kind of controlling all that. And then what it's got here also is your domestic hot water. So if you had a day where you were cooling and you're creating cold water to distribute out through all the house and create that air conditioning, you still want to have hot water. So this brains of the system is going to say, hey, let's turn on the outdoor unit for, you know, a half an hour and let's create a whole bunch of hot water to fill up our hot water tank for our domestic hot water. And then it'll switch off when this is full and then it'll start producing more cold water. And then that cold water then gets distributed through a set of uh, pumps to the fan coil units, which we'll show you later, to be distributed throughout the house. So one of the benefits of going with the air to water system is that we're not having to heat a bunch of air and then run it through ducts to the different parts of the house. This was really important in this particular location because there used to be a furnace over here and it had duct work that came down about down to here. And so the owner, the client for this house is a, is a taller guy. And so he had to duck underneath this to be able to get anywhere in here. And this particular basement we're gonna be renovating. So there's gonna be a media center that's down here and he's gonna be able to set up his man cave and all that stuff. But since we're now gonna be distributing the heating and cooling through some half inch plumbing lines, as opposed to large ducts, we were able to get rid of all the duct work and recapture some of this usable, now usable space that we're gonna have in this basement that was otherwise unusable before.